Thank you for choosing to have your total hip replacement at Community Regional Medical Center. We are a nationally recognized center of excellence in total hip replacements, and our program is designed to give you a successful experience so that you can get back to that healthy, happy life you once knew faster. You are about to begin the journey towards improving the quality of your life through managing your hip with Community Regional's Total Hip Replacement Program. This video will take about 30 minutes or less, so relax and enjoy watching. This will help you learn what to expect about total hip replacement. Our goal is to help you achieve good results and success to help you get back to the active lifestyle you deserve. Your participation and understanding are important to the progress of your experience. Your specially trained team of healthcare professionals will provide you with the highest level of care consisting of the following experts. Your orthopedic surgeon is an expert in this field. He will work very closely with you to recover and return to a healthy and active life. You will have an excellent team of nurses 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to ensure that your needs are met. Your discharge coordinator will be available to answer any questions you may have and assist you in preparing for discharge. The physical therapist will teach you the exercises necessary for the best recovery. Pain and limited movement can happen as the cartilage in your joint wears away. Surfaces begin to rub against each other and become irritated. There are over 100 kinds of arthritis. We will explain the two most common types. Osteoarthritis, the most common kind of arthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, that is characterized by the slow breakdown of cartilage and the underlying bone within a joint causing pain and stiffness. Rheumatoid arthritis, a disease found in the body causing inflammation to multiple joints. The inflamed joints lead to damage of the cartilage causing pain and disability. During a total hip replacement, your surgeon will replace your hip joint with a prosthetic hip. The hip joint includes the ball-shaped head of the femur, which fits into the socket or the acetabulum of the pelvis. Smooth, articular cartilage covers the bony surfaces, cushioning the hip joint and allowing the parts to move easily. The most common cause of hip disability is osteoarthritis, a chronic disease in which articular cartilage wears away, resulting in severe hip pain and stiffness. When pain medication and other treatments are no longer effective, your surgeon will perform a total hip replacement. During the procedure, your surgeon will remove the damaged cartilage and bone and reshape the bony surfaces to fit the prosthesis or artificial joint. A cemented artificial joint includes a socket with a smooth liner and a stem topped with a ball that replaces the femoral head. Your surgeon will cement these prosthetic components into place. Then your surgeon will fit the new femoral head into the new socket. Before closing the incision, your surgeon will check the new joint's range of motion to ensure it functions properly. Over 90% of patients experience dramatic pain relief and improved hip function and have a new joint that will last 15 to 20 years. You can expect to be ready to go home within three days. Get back to your active life in six to 12 weeks. Be sure to take your pain medication around the clock to keep your pain under control. It is important to eat a well-balanced diet. If overweight, weight loss will be beneficial in your outcomes. If diabetic, maintain control over blood sugars. Get your grocery shopping done ahead of time. On the night before surgery, do not eat after midnight. Do not smoke. You are encouraged to avoid or quit smoking. Many risks are involved with smoking and surgery, such as wound healing, tolerance to medication, and risk of problems related to your lungs. Look for items that can get in the way. Rugs, cords, furniture. Tape back cords or wires. Buy a nightlight for your hallways at nighttime. Place regularly used items in areas that you can access easily. 
Prepare your meals ahead of time. Find a chair that you can use once you are home. Make sure it isn't too soft or short. Do not shave your legs the day before or day of surgery. Use antibacterial wipes. Shower with antibacterial wipes the night before and the morning of surgery. Don't use lotions or powder on your body the morning of surgery. Tolerable and appropriate exercises before your surgery will improve your muscle strength to recover faster. Make arrangements for help. It is best to have someone stay with you a few days. Fill your prescriptions ahead of time. Plan to have someone give you a ride home before 11 o'clock on the day of your discharge. Pay your bills ahead of time up to a few weeks after your estimated return home. We encourage you to leave as much as possible at home. Please do bring list of medications for review, clothing to be released home in, phone numbers that you will need. Please do not bring money, jewelry, credit cards, or any item that has significant value to you. You will be scheduled by your doctor's office for a pre-admission visit at Community Regional Medical Center, pre-admission testing unit located at the first floor of the East Medical Plaza building across the main hospital along Divisadero Street. The visit occurs typically over one to two hours. Screening process includes blood and urine tests, a chest x-ray, and an EKG may also be ordered. Pre-op instructions will also be explained to you, like pre-surgical scrub and shower, medications, and fasting instructions. It is important that you follow these instructions exactly, so please feel free to ask questions. Be sure to bring your current medications, insurance cards, and driver's license or ID card. On the day of surgery, remember, don't eat, drink, or smoke on the night before your surgery. Be sure to take your morning medications with sips of water if your physician has instructed you to take them. Arrive to the hospital about three hours before your scheduled surgery time to be checked in and ready for surgery. Family may use a parking pass for the parking lot designated or use the parking garage on your surgery date. Report to the Surgical Services Center on the second floor of the hospital to check in. Before surgery, once you are checked in, your nurse will give you a gown to change in, give you a name band, place an IV catheter in you, review your medications, collect and verify your history, go over your understanding of the procedure and expectations, go over your consent for surgery, provide you with further instruction. Once you are ready to go to the operating room, your family will receive a patient ID number which can be used to observe your progress through surgery on the electric surgery status board located in the cafeteria and family waiting rooms. Family members may wait in the surgical waiting room until your room is assigned. After this, they may wait in the room assigned to you on the floor and you will see them there when you arrive. Your physician may call your family members after the surgery. While waiting to go to the operating room, you may be visited by your surgeon or his nurse practitioner or physician assistant, as well as a member of the anesthesiology team. Your surgeon will review with you the procedure he will perform and then write his initials on your skin at the surgical site. This is done to ensure that the proper procedure is done on the correct side. You may also receive your first antibiotic here and medication to help you relax. You will be transported on a gurney to a holding area until your doctor is ready to take you to surgery. Here you will get to meet your operation team, review your history and medications again, assist the physician and nurse with marking your surgery site, discuss anesthesia with your anesthesiologist, in the operation room, you should expect someone to coach you through the next process. The anesthesiologist will put you to rest comfortably. A Foley catheter may be placed in you to avoid any urination that would contaminate your procedure. The average length of joint replacements vary from one to two hours. 
The operating room will notify your family once your surgery is complete. When your surgery is over, you will be taken to the post-anesthesia care unit, or PACU, where you may stay for at least an hour depending on how you are feeling. The nurses in PACU will monitor your breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, and pain level, as well as your dressing for any bleeding or drains, if any. After surgery, you will then be transferred to a private room in the orthopedic unit to recover from surgery. Your nurse will come in and examine you and your surgical site, remind you to use your incentive spirometer, get you out of bed once you wake up, get you situated and comfortable in your room, give you intravenous or IV fluids to keep you hydrated, draw blood as necessary to monitor your blood levels, provide you with education from your room television and other instructions, your nurse will also help you manage your pain. Some of these instructions may be repeated when you are more fully awake. You may also see these equipments when you wake up. Intravenous line or IV. You will be inserted with a catheter in your arm for medicine and IV fluids. Oxygen. You may receive oxygen through a nasal tube or oxygen mask. It doesn't mean that you are having difficulty breathing or that there is a problem of any kind. It is simply to increase your oxygen consumption hours after surgery when you are still sedated. Foley catheter. A catheter may be inserted in the OR to drain your urine and prevent contamination of the procedure, if it is used at all. It will be removed on the first or second day after surgery. Patient-controlled analgesia machine, or PCA. Your doctor may order this pain pump to administer your medication by pressing it yourself. This machine contains a syringe filled with pain medication and has a tubing connected to you. When you feel pain, simply push the button at the end of the cord. This machine is programmed for you to receive pain medication in small amounts. Don't let anyone other than you press it, as it contains medication that might make you drowsy and give you more than you need. You are the expert on your own pain. You will be asked frequently by the nursing staff to rate your pain from 0 to 10. This may be taken down the next day and be shifted to oral pain medication to help manage your pain. Notify your nurse if your pain is not controlled. Thromboembolic deterrent, or TED hose, and sequential compression device, or SCD. These socks and machine may be placed on your legs to promote and aid in circulation. You will wear the TED hose for the majority of the time, and the SCDs are in place while you are in bed. These devices also help in preventing blood clots, a preventable complication after surgery. Incentive spirometer is a device to help your lungs expand by taking deep breaths with it. It helps prevent pneumonia and clears your lungs. You will have a clear liquid diet after surgery and will progress to a regular solid as tolerated. Surgical drains. Although not often, your doctor may insert a drain during surgery with a reservoir to catch the blood. Your nurse will monitor the drainage from your incision and reinforce it as the doctor's order indicates. Pneumonia. Getting out of bed early on will prevent pneumonia. Use your incentive spirometer to strengthen your muscles by coughing and deep breathing. Blood clots. Something as simple as moving around early can prevent blood clots. Wear your stockings at all times. Sequential compression device on your legs are also applied. You may need blood thinners if the physician orders that. Infection. You will receive antibiotics to reduce risk. Wash your hands thoroughly and make sure everyone else does too. Constipation. Drink lots of fluids. Take laxatives or stool softeners as prescribed by your physician. Walking around will also help. Swelling. Cold therapy is helpful to decrease swelling. Elevate your legs above your heart when possible. Nausea. Sometimes patients experience some nausea. 
Be sure to express nausea to your caregiver so that he or she can provide you with medication for relief. Start with a clear liquid diet. Slowly introduce solid foods one by one when you are comfortable. The physical therapy will get you up to start walking on the day of surgery. Studies show that the sooner you get up after this procedure, the better outcomes you will have. You will learn about transferring yourself, walking with a walker, exercises to strengthen your muscles, climbing stairs, and precautions to take. You should be sitting up out of bed for your meals. We also advocate safety over privacy. Remember, do not try to get out of bed yourself. Nurses are there to help you with your needs, like standing or going to the bathroom. Call, don't fall. Use the call bell to let your team know you need help. Rest. Total hip replacement precautions. You will need to take extra precaution if you have a hip replacement. Don't cross your legs. Don't bring your leg out to the side. Don't move your leg behind you. Don't point your toes inward or outward. Don't bend your hip greater than 90 degrees. Avoid low sofas and chairs. Use high back chairs. Planning for discharge. A nurse discharge coordinator will visit you to discuss any options you may need, like outpatient or in-home physical therapy, rehab, or short-term skilled nursing care. She can also help you with getting any medical equipment if the physical therapist recommends it. She can help answer your questions on your insurance, home versus acute rehab or skilled nursing facility. We prefer discharging you back to your home with the necessary support arranged for you. This will also prevent the risk from getting infection somewhere else. If needed, you will be followed up by a home health nurse or physical therapist. Caring for yourself at home. Arrange for help at home before the day of your surgery. Discuss physical therapy options with your physician and discharge planner. Notify your team if you already have medical equipment at home. Be sure to follow up with your physician for your appointment after going home. Keep your copy of your discharge instructions in case you should need to reread it. Caring for your incision. Some drainage may be normal, but your incision should stay clean and dry. Drainage should occur less and less over time. Do not shower or sit in a bathtub until your doctor okays it. Watch for warning signs such as color changes, swelling, odor, excessive drainage, fever, chest pain, trouble breathing, calf pain. Staple removal. You should have your staples removed when you follow up with your doctor in 10 to 14 days. The most important thing you can remember from this is to keep a good attitude. Stay positive about your success in this journey. Hard work, persistence, and cooperation can reward you with an opportunity to return to a healthy and active life. Thank you for choosing Community Regional Medical Center.